Actually, book of First Thessalonians chapter 5, and we got down to verse 23 there where the Apostle Paul said, I pray God that your whole spirit, soul, body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We saw in that Scripture that God is interested in the whole man, W-H-O-L-E, the whole man. He does not want us halfway made. He wants us whole. And uh, He emphasizes this throughout the Bible. And we, we don't want to be uh, a half-baked Christian or anything like that, right? We want to be whole. Spirit, soul, and body. Amen? And uh, I, I'm convinced above everything else. we got Easter, uh, Resurrection Day coming up. Well, a couple of weeks, I guess. And uh, uh, I, I'm persuaded that the resurrected body is going to be complete. Amen? Thoroughly complete in every way, glorified, resurrected. Amen. Looking forward to that, aren't you? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. For a scripture this morning to start with, I want us to go to the epistle of 3 John. And we'll read verse 2. One of my many favorite verses in the Bible. Amen. All right, you got Third John verse two. Here the apostle John says, "Beloved, I wish." This is King James version. I wish above all things that you may prosper. You could also say that is that was his prayer, and you could say, "I pray above all things that you may." Prosper, be in health, even as your soul prospers. You know, that, that's somewhat on in line with the scripture that we studied last week, right? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And there's emphasis here, I believe, more. On the soul, right? Now, he said, I wish that you may prosper. Now, I, I'm convinced that that means materially uh, prospering, financially prospering. I mean, I've, I've got a, a, a lot of scriptures that I can look at in the Bible that tells me God wants us to be prosperous in that area financially, materially. And in, in health. Now, if God is going, and He did, He's going to obligate Himself as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. Well, God wants us to be in health. I, I believe that God's ultimate desire for us to uh, be in health, not just say, well, uh, I'm sick, I need to be healed. We know that happens, happened to all of us, I'm sure. But He wants us to stay in health, right? Mm -hmm. To be in health. And that's uh, part of God's wish and desire for our lives. Mm -hmm. But he said it is conditional. It will only prosper us in the whole being of spirit, soul, and body if we allow our soul to prosper accordingly. Now when he said as your soul prospers, he's talking about 
spiritual prosperity. In other words, we have the whole gospel for the whole man. Amen? We're, we're not cut off anywhere. We have the whole gospel for the whole man. Which I think that goes along with us having full gospel on our church side, right? We, we want the whole gospel. We don't want a part of it. We want it all. Amen? Now, so prosperity for the whole man complete is God's will. Okay? Now, y'all have been asked the question. You might have even been asked it today. The question is, I think one of the most asked questions that I hear is, how are you doing? Huh? When you see somebody, isn't that a common thing that you say to them? How are you doing? It is a good question. Sometimes I think maybe it can be a little bit overdone. I uh, listen sometimes to uh, radio talk shows where they have call in and people will call in and they will uh, many times seem like they will um, say to the host of the talk show uh, how are you doing? How are you doing? And somebody else will call in and they'll say how are you doing? Well I'm doing alright. And somebody else will call in how are you doing? Well I'm still doing alright. Amen. So sometimes I think it's just a uh, phrase that people use, uh, and they, uh, it can be overdone, I suppose. But it is a question that I want to put out to you this morning. How are you doing in regard to you prospering? Be in hell, even as your soul, your spiritual man, if you will, prospers. One thing that John said here in verse 3, well actually in verse, verse 3 and 4, if you read on down. And he said, I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you. I can see right there, if we're going to be prosperous, we're going to have to walk in the truth. Amen? Truth is imperative to prosperity from God. Then he said in verse 4, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Of course, John here uh, uh, putting himself as their spiritual father. And he would have definitely been. Uh, so walking in the truth. So how are we doing in that regard? Now, uh, just a little bit of information here on the spiritual nature and the natural physical nature. In the... Uh, the book of Genesis, if, if you want to go with me, book of Genesis, chapter 2, and I want us to read verse 7. This is talking about when God created man. And here's what it says, Genesis 2 and 7. And the Lord formed man... I believe he used his hands, formed a man out of the dust of the ground. Now listen to something here. That means that man was formed out of the clay, as we say, formed out of the dust of the ground, and at that point in time, there was a physical body laying there on the ground. Amen? A physical body. Physical. 
But it wasn't alive, was it? No. And it says the Lord God breathed into his man's nostril. Adam, we know. Nostrils. The breath of life. Now let me tell you something. When the Bible uses the term like it does here, breath of life, uh, it refers to a spirit. God is a spirit, right? He is a spiritual being. So if He breathed His spirit into the nostrils of man, at that point in time, it says, and man, became a living soul. Now, a lot of theologians and a lot of people try to explain all of these things of the spirit and soul and the makeup of man. But we understand that man has a spiritual nature. He also has a physical nature. Every one of us. Right? We're a spiritual being. We are a physical being. No matter what scientists or anybody else tells you, that's what you are. That's what I am. Amen? So a physical body became a living soul when God breathed the breath of life into it. A living soul to live forever. Keep that in mind. Somewhere. Now, if we're going to talk spirit, soul, body, we need to understand how each one of them relates to certain things. Well, here's about one of the simplest ways I know of to explain that. With the spirit, our spirit, we address God. Right? Our spirit, we address God. When you pray to God, you pray Bible even says, pray in the Spirit. Right? Pray. Our Spirit addresses God. God gave us the Spirit. When we die, the Spirit returns where? God who gave it. Right? So the Spirit addresses God. Now, the soul becomes sometimes a little more complicated to our thinking. Actually, the soul, part of the Spirit man, yes... The soul addresses the things concerning our body. Hmm? Yeah. Now, our physical body addresses the world that we live in. The earth. Natural things. That's what our physical body does. So, you can address any one of those realms... And you can apply spirit, soul, and body to that. Now, our soul actually reflects our humanity. It also reflects our personality. Huh? You have a personality. You have one. I have one. We're all unique, aren't we? Now, if we were just a body, we wouldn't have much of a personality, would we? Or if we were just a spirit and didn't have a body, well, you'd say, well, that's a will of a wisp, and I don't know what kind of a person they are, right? But no, we do have a body, we have a soul. And the soul reflects our personality. Did you know Jesus had a soul? Uh -huh. Yeah, he did. Because he took on humanity. In the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 31, it tells us that, uh, talking about Peter on the day of Pentecost, talking about the resurrection of Jesus, he said uh, that uh, the prophecy was in the book of Psalms, that he, God would not leave his soul in hell. He would not see corruption, in other words. That's the reason Jesus was resurrected on the third day before the corruption set in, because God was not going to leave, the Bible says, his soul there. You see? Now, 
Did you know that the soul of man, here's where we're going with the message this morning. The soul of man can become weary. Did I get any amen, sir? Okay, good. All right. Didn't thought, I thought you were so weary you didn't hear me. All right. Our souls can get, we know our body can get weary. Wow, do we ever know that? But I believe the soul of man can also get weary because, uh, well, let's find a scripture that will help explain. Go with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. And wonderful chapter here talking about how we're to run with patience uh, the race that is set before us. Wow. And we are in verse 2, it says, we are looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Wow. Always look unto Jesus. And He is that because the joy that was set before Him is why He endured the cross. He despised the shame. But now is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now listen. We are, as believers, we are to consider Jesus. I tell you what, when we get weary, when things seemingly are falling apart around us, a lot of times we start considering a lot of things out here in the world. We'll consider professionals and and, and, and who can help me and how to get out of the mess we're in and, and all of this. I, I think first and foremost, church, we just need to stop and consider Jesus. Huh? Stop and consider Jesus. That is such a powerful thing. Consider Him who endured such contradiction of sinners against Himself. Uh... Then he said, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Now, there probably are people out here that will say that a human being is just a mind and a body. Well, no, we're still more than just a mind and a body. Amen? We're a spiritual being. But he said, you can be wearied and you can faint in your minds. That's the reason, church, we need to consider Him, Jesus, amen, need to consider Him instead of ourselves. How are you doing? <laughs> Can't get off of that, can I? How are you doing? Well, let me tell you all about my troubles. Huh? Amen. Nobody knows the troubles I've seen. But we consider ourselves so quickly, don't we? Instead of considering Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. Right? Okay. Now, we become weary. And then the Apostle Paul even wrote over the book of Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. He said, to be not weary in well-doing. For in due season you will reap if you faint not. Amen? You know, it's, it's easy sometimes to faint under pressures, right? But, uh, you know, uh, the Bible says men ought always to pray and not faint. So and instead of just giving in to fainting, start praying. Right? Good advice. That come from Jesus, by the way. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we can become weary, but don't, don't uh, uh, become weary in well-doing. Just keep on doing well. Now, we can all identify with this, I'm sure. The stresses and the pressures of life can overwhelm us. At times. You ever been there? Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody come up to you and you were going through a 
mental stress time in your life. And somebody said to you, how are you doing? It doesn't matter if physically you feel as well as you've ever felt in your life. You're still going to feel bad because of the stresses and the pressures and the things that have mounted up against you in your soul. Let me tell you, what's going on in your soul affects what's going on in your physical body. Wow. That's worth coming to church for out there. Amen? What's going on? What's happening? And it doesn't matter if, if you're sick in your soul or you're overburdened in your soul. You're going to know, I don't feel good. And that, you know that, don't you? I don't feel good. And it affects our whole being, doesn't it? Now, what do we do about it? What do we do? I mean, I've got the answer book here this morning. Y'all got, all got your answer book, please? Yeah. Amen. We, we need to go to the answer book. I mean, we can identify problems all day long, but until we try to solve it with answers, we're still not gaining, are we? We need to solve problems with answers. Well, all right, let's find some good answers for the things that can weary our souls and keep us from being prosperous you know, and in health, even as our soul would prosper. All right. You're in the book of Romans. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 12, first of all. Now, the Apostle Paul here did mention that, uh, in fact, he begged us that we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Now, in verse 2, he said, and be not conformed to this world. That means the ways of this world. Now, I, I tell you what. I do not like to just blindly go along with the ways of this world. I don't care how popular they are. Or how highly esteemed they may be. The Bible says don't be conformed to just going along with the world and the ways of the world, right? But you can be transformed. You listen to it? You can be transformed from thinking the way the world thinks and you can only do it by the renewing of your mind. Your mind needs to be renewed my mind needs to be renewed. That's right. Because I, I can point back to a time in my life that I, I didn't think right. I mean, I, I, I thought a lot of negative things. I might have thought they were positive at the time, but no, they were negative. They weren't good for me. So we get transformed by the renewing of our mind. In other words, simple, hillbilly language, we start thinking spiritually instead of carnally or naturally. Right? We start thinking on a higher level. Mm -hmm. Now, when we get born again, our spirit man gets recreated I mean, how many of you really had a big part to play as far as you getting born again? How many of you had a part to play when you were born to the flesh the first time? I, I, I didn't do anything. Huh? Well, let me tell you something. All you've done to get born again is what the book of Romans says. You believed on God. You believed that God raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. And with your heart you believed unto righteousness and with your mouth confession was made unto salvation. And you got born again. You were made a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old thing passed away. All things become new. And you know who did all that? 
God did. I said, God did. You want to make take credit for it, but you didn't do any of it. God did. He recreated your spirit and made you something you never was before. Amen? Now, when you come to the mind, you come to the soul part of this thing, there is something you need to do or it does not get done. He said that you can be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to start doing something with your mind and your thinking. Hmm? Your mind and your thinking. And let me tell you something. It's an ongoing process. Well, I thought right way back some years ago. But no. I believe you have to continually be transformed by the renewing of your mind because he said that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So, ongoing process. You know, the Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 that let this mind, let it, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Right? So we are to have the spiritual mind the same as Jesus had. Now think about it. I'm going to give you a good example here. Now, Jesus operated with a spiritual mind. Y'all agree with that? He operated here on this earth, walking around for three years, three and a half years, with a spiritual mind. Okay? Jesus' mind and His thinking was controlled by revealed knowledge. It was not always, never really was, Controlled by what he could see or what he could hear or what he could smell. It was controlled. His thinking was controlled by a higher power. Another level, if you will. Spiritual, revealed knowledge. Wow. And how do I know that? Because the sufferings that Jesus endured, as we read there in, in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, the, He suffered in the contradictions of sinners and the cross and all of these things. His sufferings did not cause Him to give place to His senses. You know what a sense-controlled Christian really is? A carnal Christian. But that's true. Jesus never did that. He did not give place to His five physical senses to control Him, you know, in His earthly ministry. The book of Romans, we're right there. Let's go to uh, Romans chapter 8, if you will. I want to read some of this beginning in verse 6. Read along with me here, if you would. Once again, the Apostle Paul said, For to be carnally minded is what? Death. Carnally minded is death. Somebody said, well, if I watch too much TV, does that mean I'm carnally minded? Well, it probably don't help. <laughs> but to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. Amen? And then he explains it here. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. 
Right? So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. We're in the fleshly body. But if we're walking after the flesh and the lust thereof, we're not pleasing God. John said, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, love the Father is not in him. All is in the world, the love of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. They are not of the Father, but they are of the world. Amen? So he's saying here, you're not in the flesh, not walking after the Lord, but you are in the Spirit, so that it be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. The Spirit of God dwells in you if you are truly saved. Amen? Don't let the devil tell you otherwise. <laughs> so if He dwell in you, but he also said, now if any man have not the Spirit of God, he's not of his. You're not of God. And if Christ be in you, greater is he that is in me, right, than he that is in the world, then the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Amen. <laughs> Book of Ephesians. Let's, let's go to chapter 4, if you will. Ephesians 4, and let's look in verse 20. He said, he's talking about, Paul's talking about moral standards here. He said, but you have not so learned Christ, and if so be that you have heard Him, You've heard Christ being preached. And you have been taught by Him. Listen to this. As the truth is in Jesus. All right. That's what we talked about there. John was getting excited because of the, those disciples that are walking in the truth. Paul's saying the same thing. The truth is in Jesus. You've heard of Him. You're, you're, you're doing that. Then he said in verse 22, that you put off concerning the former conversation uh, or your manner of life that you was before you got saved. The old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Notice. And be renewed, and be renewed, not a one-time thing, church. It's a continuous act. Being renewed in the spirit of your mind. Wow. Did you know that probably has a lot to do with this old human will? That's right. God has to deal sometimes with a stubborn will, right? Alright. We get in the spirit of our mind, we get renewed. Verse 24 says, And that you put on the new man, which after God is created and in righteousness and true holiness. Not false holiness, but true. Amen. So you always want to be a put on? There's your opportunity right there. Put on. Put on the new man. Amen. So, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 it says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds then he told us to cast down every imagination and every high thing coming from the devil Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And to bring into captivity every thought unto the obedience of Christ. Now that's something you have to do, I have to do, or it does not get done. And if it doesn't get done, guess what? Your mind is not going to be a spiritual mind, it will be a carnal mind. If we don't do that, then our soul is going to suffer and our whole being is going to suffer. Hmm? 
Try it. So, the book of Isaiah chapter 55, God talking about thoughts. And He said, you know, hey, my thoughts are not your thoughts. And my ways are not your ways. Because, you know, as heaven is higher than the earth, He said, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And my ways are higher than your ways. Amen? We need to start thinking on a higher level. A spiritual level, if you will. Amen? You know, God gives us definite instructions on how to do things. And a lot of times we uh, might miss those instructions. But He tells us, actually, in the book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, Tell you something right now that's going to be helpful to every one of us if we'll do it. There is a way to control our thoughts. Huh? I said there's a way. Somebody said, no. No, it's, you know, my thoughts are just like a bird flying over my head. I can't keep that bird from flying over my head. I can't keep those thoughts out of my mind. I agree with you to a certain point. I can't keep a bird from flying over my head, but I can keep it from building a nest in my hair. Amen. So that's why you cast down every thought and imagination that exalts it. You cast them down. You replace a bad thought with a true thought an honest thought, a just thought, a pure thought, a lovely thought, a thought of good report. That's what you think upon. You think upon those things. Amen? Then you are well on your way to a prosperous soul and a mind renewed by the Word. Amen? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and what? A strong mind. Power, love, and a strong mind. All the devil likes to play tricks with your mind. It's uh, he thinks it's his uh, playground a lot of times. It doesn't. Mean. Amen. Don't let him play around up there. He has no business. Amen. God's not giving us a fear. You know, that's one of the first things, tactics the devil uses is fear. Fear. You know, James chapter 1 verse 8 tells us that a double-minded man is unstable in his own ways. In every way. Right? A double-minded man. You think right one time and then you give place to fear and you start thinking negative. Well, it doesn't work well. Now, why is it you can't make that work? Because you cannot live by faith and fear at the same time. <coughs> you can't do it. You ought to live by one or live by the other. You can't combine them. Now, that brings us to this. Yeah, let's, let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 6, if you will. And we want to go down to verse 22. Matthew 6, 22. Sermon on the Mount. Jesus talking about the light. Love the light, don't you? He says in verse 22, the light of the body is the eye. Well, we know that's a figure of speech, right? But he's going somewhere with it. You know where he's going? The light of the body is the eye. Did you know what? The light of the soul is the spirit. Amen? That's right. The light of the soul is the spirit. If your eye be, listen to this, single, single. In other words, 
We ought to have one purpose in this life, and that's to bring glory to God. And we already covered that. So if your purpose in life is right, your eye is single, and then your whole body will be full of what? Light. Amen? Body. If, if the spirit of man is, is single in its devotion to God, not divided, the soul will be full of light. The body will also... Re you know, light heals this body. Amen? Light's healing. But he said, if your eye be evil, your whole body's going to be full of darkness. If, if the spirit is evil... The whole soul man is going to fall into darkness. Right? If therefore the light that is in you be darkness, how great is the darkness? And then he points out, no man can serve two masters. He either hate the one, love the other, or he'll hold on to the one, despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. Okay? Listen to this. A single mind is ruled. I found two things that rules. I mean, it rules. One thing that rules to make your mind single is none other than the Word of God. Amen. The other one, y'all getting excited now, ain't you? You know what the other one is? Patience. Time to shout right there. Patience. Amen. You know what Jesus said over in Luke chapter 21, verse 19? He said, in your patience, you possess your soul. That's what he said. In your patience. After you have done the will of God, you still have need of patience. Amen? Now this is good medicine for a prosperous soul, isn't it? Amen? So, be ruled by the Word of God and also patience. I want to read one more scripture. I'm going to 1 Peter chapter 2. And verse 25. Peter is saying that we were like sheep going astray. You know, that's right. Sheep need a shepherd. Right? But he said, you are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of your souls. You know, medical science and a lot of things out here today spend and Make, they make a lot of money trying to heal the soul of man. I think they've even got medicines for it. Huh? Medicines have a bridge gap. Or they think so. To keep the soul of man from breaking down. I've got good news for you this morning. The Bible gives one cure. For the soul of man. And that is. Our chief shepherd. And our bishop of our souls. The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning?